Welcome everybody to another exciting lecture in water delivery systems. And this module we're going to be discussing well drilling techniques. Now the past few modules we have focused on pumps and pumping and what makes those work. We often use pumps to extract, uh, extract water from wells along with other fluids. And so this I think is a natural uh, next step in our discussion. Okay, so I, I'm going to take a few things here for, um, I'm going to assume that you already know what a well is. And maybe that's a dangerous assumption, but if you don't know what a well is, you might want to spend a little bit of time researching what that is. But the, the short of the skinny is that a well is a bore or a hole in the ground, which we use to access groundwater. And groundwater is found in what we call an aquifer. Okay, an aquifer is just a water-bearing uh, section that we have underneath the ground. So when we want to access that, we have to punch a hole into the ground. And there's a variety of methods that we use to access that water. So that's what we're going to discuss about in this particular lecture. Okay, and I'm going to focus specifically on water wells because there are other drilling methods. And this is by no means inclusive, but these are the methods that I'm most acquainted with and which are most prevalent in our area. Okay, so these methods can be very simple to very sophisticated. And uh, this is in no particular order. Um, we have things like well points, we have augers, we have percussion, which I'm going to call cable tool probably from here out. We also have rotary, and we have air percussion. Uh, there is a book, by the way, that um, if you do go into this industry, is probably the best book that's been written on the subject, and it's Groundwater and Wells, and it's written by Driscoll, and it was uh, uh, it's put out by I think Johnson uh, Johnson Screens or something like that. I gotta I'll have to look at that to make sure what it is. Anyway, you can find it secondhand for decent. Um, they have done a, a, a pretty good job at keeping that in publication. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about this each of these things individually. Okay, so let's let's talk about well points. Well points are also called sand points. So uh, they can be used that term can be used uh, interchangeably with each other. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do here, I'm going to skip this slide. I'm going to show you what a picture of a well point looks like. Okay, so this is a well point. Typically these are made of stainless steel for obvious reasons. If you're going to put metal in water, you probably want something that's not going to rust um, over time. And what you typically have is a point on the end, okay, to help drive this into the ground. This is two different varieties and, and there are many other varieties which are produced. These are just two that I chose to show you for this particular lecture. Okay, but we have a point on the end and we have a section of pipe okay and we have always a section which is perforated so it has holes in it this is just a perforated screen uh, here on the other side we have these perforations and we have a gauze packing in there almost all these that I know of have threads on the top so you can connect more sections to it okay so that's essentially what they look like they're not real complicated uh, I think if you had uh, some background or some knowledge of fabrication, you could probably fabricate one of these yourselves. Okay, So let's talk about these a little bit more. Installation of a well point is typically done by hand or with simple machinery. So you should be asking yourself, is this something that's suitable for a deep supply of water or deep groundwater? And the answer to that should be most definitely not, right? First of all, if you look at the size of these, let me go back to that particular slide. If you look at the size of these, I know there's no scale here, but these are not very big. They're not designed to be big. They're not designed to supply large amounts of water. Okay, These are fairly shallow, uh, 15 to 30 feet, and in some places that's going to be very, very difficult. Um, and you're looking at supplies of around you know five gallons per minute or less. So we're looking at very small domestic or livestock applications where we have groundwater that is relatively close to the surface. Okay, and you can imagine um, we're, we're driving this in by hand and uh, the device that we use to drive it in by hand it usually looks like something like a, uh, 
a T-post driver. Um, you know, it has a couple handles and then it has a hollow section and kind of a hammer on the back that you can use to force this into the ground. Um, or we use very simple machinery to do the installation. So you can imagine if, you, if you're doing this by hand or even with simple machinery, it's going to be very difficult in certain types of, types of material, certain types of soil, right? So if I have really rocky or gravelly areas or if I have solid rock or in this area if I have a, uh, you know, a very strong uh, caliche layer, I might have a difficult time of installing one of these things. So installation can be tricky, though with a little bit of, of willpower in uh, what we would call unconsolidated material, and I probably need to distinguish between unconsolidated and consolidated materials before we go any further. But if I'm in unconsolidated material, the installation of this is not too bad for, for these shallow wells. Okay, so let's, let's talk about what exactly uh, that is. Okay, so let's see, do I have some room? Okay, so let's distinguish between consolidated and unconsolidated. Okay, so if I'm going to take take a look at what I'm talking about is what's going on below the surface. What's the material below the surface? Okay, so you know if I take a block of ground underneath me, and if that block of ground is solid, okay, that might be lava, it might be something like granite, it might be something like limestone, quartzite, something that's really hard. It's very cemented. This is going to be my consolidated rock. Okay. Now, alternatively, if I have the same unit, okay, and I have that full of things which are loose, sands, gravels, silts, clays, things which are not strongly cemented together, that's going to be my unconsolidated, okay? So obviously, with these types of systems, I'm going to have a very difficult time of driving that through a consolidated rock, okay? I'm going to destroy this thing in that process. So hopefully that helps kind of clarify what those terms mean. I think that's important for you to know as we discuss these well drilling techniques. Okay, let's see, what do we got next? Oh yeah, okay, so let's talk about augers. Um, augers are pretty slick. Um, it is exactly what it says it is, and this is a relatively standard size unit. Um, it has a relatively small drill stem on it, but an auger is essentially what it says it is. It's an auger. So you're looking at this kind of screw type shape of a drill stem which then goes into the ground and then your chippings are brought up and, and chippings, cuttings, uh, whatever you want to call it, the, the earth that you're digging through is going to come up along the screw. And I've got a pretty good video on this which um, you're going to watch later. Okay, so let's, let's see, let's talk about this a little bit more. So most of these um, you do have hand augers. Um, you also have truck and trailer mounted ones like the one that I just showed. Some of these can get a little bit bigger. The video that you're going to watch on YouTube actually shows a pretty good sized one compared to the one that I just showed. Uh, these can be hand or truck, hand or truck trailer mounted type systems. They're good for relatively shallow holes. And here we go again <laughs> with that unconsolidated material. I think these again, it's going to be really difficult to drill this type of, uh, of a system through consolidated material. So we're looking at things like clays and sands and silts, things at which we can move up that, <clears throat> that screw type uh, action. Okay, um, You're looking at relatively shallow, so you know, less than 150 feet, and I think that's, <coughs> that's pretty generous. Um, the few wells that I've helped dr drill, uh, I did with an auger, and um, <clears throat> it's pretty difficult because normally, by the time you're getting to depth, so <clears throat> you know greater than you know 20, 30 feet, you're looking at some sort of consolidated material. So only in certain circumstances could you actually get it to that great of a depth. Um, the cuttings, of course, are brought up to the surface by this screw action of the auger. And we have two types of what we call drill stems. Okay, drill stem is what we attach to uh, the, the drill rig which then goes down into the ground. So, you know, this is going to be your your solid drill stem here. 
okay and you notice there's not much you're not going to allow anything through it and then we also have these hollow stem uh, uh, drill stems okay which then would allow you to core out the center of this uh, we don't really use these in this area too frequently for water um, we use them for other applications especially in construction but we we don't use them that often around here for water but in some areas they do use these for water well construction okay percussion okay we call these cable tools um, I don't know them by any other name uh, these have been around for a fair amount of time this is probably one of the earliest ways especially in the Magic Valley that we drilled um, for water okay and, and they're not real difficult to understand uh, unfortunately the imagery I found online is not fantastic for showing how these work but essentially you have a bit on the end of a stem so here's your drill stem here and then you have a bit there's one hanging here so we have a bit that's on that and then this stem is raised up by a series of pulleys so there's a, me me a mechanical set of pulleys which then raise this thing up and then drop it so you're using gravity and you're using the weight of the stem and the bit to drive down into the ground okay and um, there aren't too many guys that still have cable tool uh, drill rigs around here there might be one or two uh, they still use these relatively frequently in Raft River um, we'll talk about that in a little bit but um, they are good in, in both types of rocks so we can run this through both consolidated and uncon unconsolidated rocks uh, the information I have says moderate depths 200 to 300 feet I think that's reasonable though um, they are capable of going three times, four times that uh, if they're given sufficient time. And that's just based on my own experience because we do have wells that are down the Raft River which are pushing, you know, a thousand feet plus which have been drilled with the cable tool. There are some issues that do arise with that. Um, the primary one is you can imagine as, as you're, you're kind of picking the stem up and you're just systematically dropping it up and down this is not a real fast way of drilling so if we're looking at significant depths and even those two to three hundred feet depths um, you know the well driller will kind of set up camp at a site and it's not unusual especially when we get to some of these greater depths for them to be there for months on end so I mean you might be looking at you know three months six months eight months for them to be kind of working on one one borehole okay so very slow and the other issue which sometimes arises from it is it's prone to uh, a caving so you can imagine as I'm driving this down through the borehole I'm pounding on the the earth if I have unconsolidated material then the borehole can actually cave in on my drill stem or or uh, the borehole can just cave in and then you're kind of starting over and over so it's it, it's it's actually surprisingly a pretty good way of drilling a well it's just very very slow that's kind of the biggest issue that goes along with uh, with the cable tool okay so the next one we have is rotary okay and rotary is probably well I know it is it is is by far the most widely used drilling method in our area it is by far the most common uh, if you're looking for a domestic supply well for your home, if you live outside of a municipality, I can almost guarantee you that your well will be drilled with some kind of rotary method. And in particular, our area, we have a fair amount of uh, air rotary. And these things are pretty good, um, reasonable depths. You're looking at 500 to 1,000 feet though uh, there's no reason that you couldn't go deeper than that. I think this is just a general standard form so you know a thousand feet plus I mean uh, this type of system is used in the oil industry oil and gas industry you know so you're looking at pretty big depths I mean you're you're looking at you know ten you know, several thousand feet plus so 
there's no reason it can't be. Reasonable depths for water, you know, this is kind of the limit of what you really want to be pumping, though. There's some places we're pumping deeper than that. So rotary by far can drill, I'd say, to the deepest uh, depths without issue. Uh, it does require a fluid, and um, I put fluid in quotes because air is considered a fluid. Okay, so depending on the type of drilling rig that we have will depend on what type of fluid that we use. If we're using compressed air, we're using air rotary. If we're using water, we're looking at reverse rotary or reverse circulation. We have things like foam. We also have mud for mud rotary. So they all have different applications. Um, you know, there's certain times that we would want to use air rotary versus a mud rotary. So I'm not going to go into that big of depth on why you choose one over the other. Um, that's something that you can, you can look at. Um, why do we need a fluid? What are the purposes of these fluids? Uh, to remove the cuttings, okay? So as I'm going down in the earth, right, I'm, I'm creating a hole. And you can think of this a lot like a, a wood, you know, just a standard drill that you would drill into wood. So as I'm drilling into the wood, you can see uh, the shavings of the the wood coming out the top, right? So we have to remove that to create the hole. That's how we get the hole. The same idea works with um, our, our water wells, okay? So with these rotary type systems or, or any system, but with these rotary type systems, we have to have a way of bringing these cuttings back to the surface, okay? So it doesn't matter if we're using air to do that, if we're using water, if we're using foam or mud they all do kind of the same thing. They remove cuttings. They also maintain um, stability in the borehole, right? So we're adding some kind of pressure to keep that system from collapsing. Um, some cases we use it to prevent formation, fluid entry. Don't worry about that. Sometimes we just don't want things coming in from the sides. Um, preventing fluid loss. Um, again, don't worry about that too much. Um, this is more important to me, cool and cleaning the bit, right? So that's the end of our drill, like a drill bit. That's the end of our, our stem where kind of the, you know, the business end of, of the drilling that's going on. It also is being used to lubricate the entire downhole system. You can imagine as you're drilling through the earth, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about consolidated or unconsolidated, you're generating large amounts of friction, which is in turn turns to heat. Uh, heat does bad things to um, you know, our drilling stems and, and our bits if it's not cooled uh, as we're, we're in that process. Okay, so that's gonna be what we have, why we have these fluids in our rotary system. So let's look at the bits that kind of go on in these rotary systems. These really have not changed very much over time. The, the, the standard form of this really hasn't changed. Um, this is kind of a really early shot that I, I grabbed from uh, the history of Alberta. Um, and this, is a, a, this one's actually relatively used. But you can see you kind of have this three-headed bit which is then um, uh, twisted onto the end of the drill stem and these do wear out you can imagine as you're driving through rock these things do have a tendency of of kind of wearing themselves out and they do have to be replaced you can also imagine that the material that you would want to put on the end of this needs to be pretty dang hard um, because you're asking it to do something which um, is going to require a, a fair amount of strength. Okay, so you know, typically we have things like carbide buttons. Uh, this one's actually relatively worn out. You can see these buttons have, have broken off, but this is looking down on one of these types of bits, and, and they all kind of take this same form, you know, with with different uh, nubs and things like that, which you know have different drilling type actions, but. That's kind of the general gist of what you get on the end of, of a rotary drill stem. So this is kind of what you get uh, as far as your bits are concerned. Okay, so that's the rotary method. And then we also have um, air percussion. And I know occasionally there's at least one outfit uh, in the Magic Valley or in the surrounding area which will come up and do air percussion to drill water wells. Uh, this uses compressed air 
to run a down bore hammer bit. So you can kind of think of this like uh, kind of like a jackhammer. Okay, so I don't want you to give give you a false impression because it does operate differently than that. But the idea is you kind of have this oscillating head, which is down my down my well, which is breaking up the rock, and then we're using air to bring the cuttings back up. And you're looking at pretty high pressure, you know, as far as compressed air and sending it down a hole. You're looking at you know 200 psi. And greater as far as uh, the pressure requirements to do this and, and the chips or cuttings are blown out the top um, it's quite I, I would call it quite messy <laughs> so it produces a lot of rock dust and rock flour kind of uh, around the surrounding area um, you're looking for small diameter relatively shallow holes um, you know, you're not looking for deep, you're not looking for big, and very good in consolidated material. Not so great in unconsolidated material, but pretty good in consolidated material. So things that are crystalline, things that are very cemented, very hard. This type of system works very well compared to some of the other ones. Um, one of the issues with it is the bits don't necessarily operate very well in submerged conditions, okay? Uh, the bits will get flooded out. You're using air, now you introduce water. It doesn't necessarily function that great when you get to your water bearing zone. However, it is very fast and it bores very straight holes. Okay, so that's a lot of information. So just take some time to digest that and then watch the videos, the supplemental videos. I think I have one for each of these drilling techniques. And, uh, you know, make sure you kind of acquaint yourself with it before you move forward into the, into the module. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the uh, forum, uh, in the module forum. So thanks, everybody.